9-11 and the neocon agenda. 9-11, the foundational event for the police state we see unfolding not just in North America and Europe, but worldwide. It's so important. 9-11, two days of truth, facing the facts, facing the evidence. That's what we're doing here today. And I want to thank all of you for being here. I'll be giving a hour-long speech and taking 30 minutes of questions later in the day. We have Professor Jim Fetzer, just one of the greatest minds on 9-11, coming up uh, after we debut my new film, Terror Storm. You'll see just here in a few minutes. But I wanted to take just a few moments to talk about courage. It is so wonderful. It energizes my soul at its very core to be here with 1,200-plus like-minded people that are seeking the truth, and, and they have the courage to face the facts and face the evidence when they see it. So I salute you for being here. <laughs> William Rodriguez is one of the heroes that we have here today. There's a lot of courage. There's a lot of courage in this room right now. But think about William Rodriguez. He showed courage repeatedly at levels that if he was in the military, he should win the Congressional Medal of Honor. On that day, he was the head janitor in one of the towers. He stayed in there. He helped take the firefighters all the way up to where the planes had impacted, to where the main damage had occurred. He single-handedly guided out 15 people himself, and he was there when that building collapsed with those firefighters and was the last civilian, the last non-emergency worker to be pulled from the rubble alive. But frankly, I think the even greater courage that he exhibited was when they took him to the White House, national TV, hundreds of shows. They wanted him to run for Congress. They wanted uh, him to be the new Sergeant Rourke. And, and, but he started talking about the bombs going off that day and the explosions before they collapsed and the things, the things that he witnessed. And they told him, just shut up about this and you're going to get millions of dollars. And they were offering him all these deals. And he said, no, I'm not. Then they turned against him. Then they tried to demonize him. And, uh, folks, I'm one of the few people that I know who's actually been in the position when you're offered millions of dollars to shut up. And I know, it, it, you know it, it, it takes some energy to do that, to say no. But this guy had the physical courage. He had the courage to say no to the propaganda. He had the courage, he had the courage to say no to the payoffs. And now he's got the courage to be on the forefront globally with the billionaire philanthropist Jimmy Walter traveling the world, speaking to members of the Japanese parliament, speaking to uh, uh, prime ministers, uh, former prime ministers in Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur, doing all of this, going and uh, speaking to the head of the parliament in Venezuela, getting an investigation going down there with Hugo Chavez. This man has put himself in the crosshairs big time because he's a real man, he's got courage, and he doesn't like thugs and bullies. He's a hero. We're here. We're here amongst heroes. And again, all of you have courage for just being here. The alternative press that's here has courage. The national press that's here has courage to get this information out, to get in the arena, to put your cards on the table. I mean, it's just so wonderful to know that we've gone from almost five years ago with no one believing that 9-11 was an inside job but had any evidence to now in major polls, half of the American people in scientific polls believe the government carried out the attacks. But I'll be honest with you, it wasn't courage on the morning of 9-11 that drove me to go on the air and clearly lay out how it was an inside job, to be the first to do it, to, to predict it two months before, saying bin Laden's CIA, he'll take the fall as a patsy to attack the World Trade Centers. I'd seen all the indicators, I had the assets inside the government to know that was coming. It would take mindless courage to see this tyranny coming and to just give up and roll over and let my family, my children, live as slaves, and I'm not going to do that!
And there's somebody else in this room that has courage, and he doesn't even want me to talk about how he has courage, but I'm going to do it. I don't care. Because we need to single out these heroes. Charlie Sheen, a long time ago, got in contact with me, and he was doing research studying 9-11, one of the most informed people I know on the subject. I know a lot of other great Hollywood people who know all about it too. They're very informed, but they don't have the courage to go public and speak out against it and expose what's happened because they understand what would happen to them. And believe me, Charlie and I talked about it before he decided to go public. And I didn't push him. I said, he said, well, I want to go public. I said, are you sure? And he knew what would happen. He knew the hit pieces, the spin machines, the things they could do. And just like flipping a light switch on, as soon as Charlie went public, we saw the most ridiculous allegations you could ever imagine. Of course, it have all been disproven as manufactured frauds. Think about that courage, knowing Knowing that 9-11 is an inside job, a self-inflicted wound, knowing that the official story is a fraud, knowing what the consequences are going to be, and going in to that lion's den. Yeah. That's the equivalent. That's the equivalent of being a World War II uh, airborne ranger and charging up those beaches in Normandy against those machine gun and howitzer nests. And Charlie Sheen did it. He knew what was going to happen. He understood it. But I don't think he understood the huge effect it would have. The 9-11 Truth Movement had grown. It was growing fast. But when he did that, it was like adding gasoline to a fire. It exploded, and those fires have spread. And Charlie Sheen, what he did with those two radio interviews, and then what he did on Jimmy Kimmel, after he'd already been told to shut up, still going on, still having the courage, what he did, I think, is the most important thing he'll probably ever do in his life. And it changed the political landscape. Not just because he was a Hollywood guy or a, or, a, or a director. No, because people knew the cost. They knew. People weren't stupid. They said, that's courage. That's somebody who knows we're under threat, and he's got the will to literally sacrifice himself to a great extent to try to save this country. So God bless you, Charlie Sheen. I love him. He's a wonderful person. And I stand with him. I stand with him, and I know you stand with him, and no matter what kind of garbage they spew, we know that's because they're trying to demonize a good man who loves this country, who loves every one of us, and loves free humanity. So let's stand with Charlie Sheen. We have to stand with every single hero. You take Professor Stephen Jones, who's worked at the highest levels, certifying huge physics projects and studies for Los Alamos and other major organizations. One of the tops of his field, published in the most prestigious magazines and scientific peer-reviewed publications. And this guy saw the evidence, he researched it, he said that's impossible. He talked to the engineers, he talked to the underwriters, he talked to the people that designed the building. Then he began to research, he got the samples, and it wasn't just thermite, it was the exact patented type used for cutting pillars. It was thermate. That presentation is coming up. So I salute Professor Stephen Jones, another hero. And now he's got other universities, other physicists, other geologists, others in archaeometry, others researching, reviewing, and his data is getting approved, approved, confirmed, 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 confirmed. It's conclusive. So again, it is, it, it is so wonderful. It's, it's the greatest thing in my life next to my children to know the greatest experience, the most fulfilling to my soul, deep down. It's like a cool drink of water in the desert to be around people like this. This is, the, this is the best thing in the world. This is the most wonderful thing in the world. I know it is for you too. And all of you are leaders. All of you are heroes for being here. You've got to get out there. You've got to become the leaders. Not just count on us to be the leaders. We're going to win this thing by all of you going out there and waking everyone up in your area. And I know you're doing that. We have the moral authority. We have the facts. We're exposing the murdering criminals that carried out 9-11. My team, the guys that work for me, Ryan Slickheiser and Aaron Dykes and, and Kevin Smith and, and uh, Mark McCorder and, and all the people, Rob Jacobson that are here, all, all my people that are here, they know what it's like. Believe me, the stuff they've gone through, the things they've faced.